Hi friends, welcome back to our channel. In this video, I would like to explain the concept of maxima and minima of a function with two variables. Already in your 11th and 12th grade, you saw that how to find the maxima and minima of a function with a single variable, single variable function, which is represented with f of x only. But here I am taking a function with two variables x and y. Okay. See, in this video, I will explain how to find procedure of how to find maximum and minimum of a function f of x comma y. So, let us denote the given function. Let us denote the given function with f of x comma y. Here, our given function f of x comma y represents a curve in two dimensions geometry. Do not forget it. So, first of all, we have to find out the first order and second order partial derivatives. Okay. First of all, we have to find, we have to find following the first and the second order partial derivative of given function f of x comma y are represented with the letters p, q, r, s and t. Okay. p is nothing but dou f by dou x, first order partial derivative of f with respect to x. Next, q is nothing but dou f by dou y. These both are known as first order partial derivatives. Since two functions are involved, only partial derivatives are exist here. Suppose given function has only single variable, single independent variable x, then we can take only ordinary derivatives. But whenever more than two independent variables are involved, then we have to use only partial derivatives only. Okay? Dou f by dou x is always represented with p, dou f by dou y is always represented with q. Do not forget these notations. Next, we have to find out r. r is nothing but dou square f by dou x square. Second order partial derivative of f with respect to x. Next, we have to find out s, which is dou square f by dou x dou y. Nothing but second order partial derivative of f with respect to x and y. Next, we have to find out t, which is dou square f by dou y square. So, in order to find out the maximum otherwise minimum of a given function f of x comma y, first of all, we have to find out these are all five partial derivatives. P and Q are known as first order partial derivatives and uh, R, S, T. These three are known as second order partial derivatives. After finding these all, all partial derivatives, we have to find out the stationary points. So, that is the second step. Step 2. So, for obtaining stationary points, for obtaining stationary points, we have to equate first order partial derivatives to 0. What are the first order partial derivatives? P and Q. P is equal to 0. Blindly, we have to equate first order partial derivatives is equal to 0 because stationary points are also known as bending points. Sometimes it is also known as turning points. At turning points only, we can get the maximum of the curve, otherwise minimum of the curve. So, at the turning point, slope of the curve is 0. First order partial derivatives are nothing but slopes. So, for getting stationary points, otherwise bending points, otherwise turning points, we must equate slopes of the curve should be 0. Otherwise, we cannot get the stationary points. Okay? Do not worry. It. So, p is nothing but dou f by dou x is equal to 0 and uh, this is dou f by dou y is equal to 0. Clearly, we are observing that these both are two equations in terms of x and y. By solving these both equations, you will get some values for x and values for y. That, that points are, that values are given, that, uh, that values of x and y given stationary points. Solving above, solving 
above equations we get stationary points we get the stationary points okay in problems sometimes we get only one stationary point sometimes we get more than one stationary points okay we can't predict initially so according to the given problem only we can get one or more than one stationary points okay here for procedure i am taking only one stationary point assume that assume that a comma b so x value is a and y value is b is the stationary point by solving this both equations we are getting x is equal to a and y is equal to b that's why i am taking a and b a comma b as stationary point so now we have to observe that we have to check that given function has either maximum otherwise minimum at this stationary point for that purpose we have to check some conditions i will give in the next step c see after getting the stationary point a comma b substitute this stationary point a comma b in the second order partial derivatives what are the second order partial derivatives r s t the, we have to substitute a b in that all three values r s t so at stationary point a comma b find the values of in r s and t it means that in r value whenever we have x replaced by a and whenever we have y value is replaced by b okay in the similar way you have to find out s value and t value at the stationary point so after that we have to observe the following things observe the following things following points otherwise so first one suppose if rt minus s square we have to find out rt minus s square also after getting r st at the stationary point we have to calculate rt minus s square also don't forget it if rt minus s square is positive and a small r value is also positive we have to observe the signs of both the both values if both are positive then f of x comma y means given function has minimum value has minimum value at the stationary point a comma b this is the first point next suppose if rt minus s square is positive but r is negative both are opposite signs particular rt minus s square positive but r is negative then given function f of x comma y has maximum value maximum value at the stationary point a comma p okay suppose rt minus s square rt minus s square is negative sometimes you may get rt minus s square is negative then f of x comma y f of x comma y has neither has neither maximum nor minimum in that case f of x comma y does not has maximum nor minimum in that case point a comma b this stationary point a comma b is called saddle point in this case a comma b is called saddle point and one more point is there i will say here see see sometimes rt minus s square becomes a zero rt minus s square may be positive may be negative sometimes it would be zero also then we can't conclude the 
decision. Okay, we can't tell anything. We don't know about given function has maximum. Otherwise, it does not has maximum. It does, it has minimum. It does not has minimum. We don't know about anything. Okay, further investigation is required. This investigation is not enough to conclude the result here. Whenever R T minus S square is equal to zero, we can't tell the decision exactly. Okay, in this case, we have to. to take another investigation okay for engineering students that investigation is not there so most of the problems students you may get r t minus s square is positive and r is also positive in that case you have to conclude that given function has minimum only sometimes you may get r t minus s square is positive and r is negative in such cases given function has maximum at that stationary point maybe students may get r t minus s square is negative in such cases given function does not has both maximum and minimum at that point at that point ab is called stationary point this is the procedure to get the maximum otherwise minimum of a function f of x comma y in the next video i will give some examples so before that it is better to prepare this procedure otherwise you can't understand the problems thank you very much see you to next video